How my ancestor, supposedly, took down a racist businessman. This is an old story that have been told in my family for as long as I can remember. We're talking my grandfather was told it by his grandfather and so on. Note that this story has had close to 200 years to be embellished and twisted so take everything with a grain of salt rather than scream, fake. Quote. Even if only a fourth of the story is true it's still a great story. This is the story of my ancestor we'll call, John, because that's the name I've always been told. John was a black man in America during the time when slavery was dying out. His grandparents having been brought there from Africa along with their children. John eventually was freed through some means. I've heard both that he paid his way out or the state he was in abolished slavery and he was freed. That way and found himself fighting in the Civil War because he felt it was the right thing to do. During the war he became good friends with a man only know as, Mitch, who supposedly came from money but had joined against his parents' wishes because he believed in freedom for all. Again. Grain of salt. The two were in the same regiment and made it through alive. Though some relatives say Mitch lost a leg or an arm in the war. Fast forward to the end of the war and John and his new wife Mary he'd met during the war used the money he'd earned to set up a small shop on the East Coast, most common city mentioned as Boston, in a small neighborhood. The shop became successful, John being a charming man and surprisingly savvy businessman. The neighborhood he'd set up in quickly growing as the city grew meaning there were always customers who needed whatever it was he sold. I've heard everything from groceries to workers' tools. They lived happily and had three children together during the time, spending a decade there when suddenly, presumably accompanied by the roar of thunder and screeches of crows. Mr. Business arrived in town. Mr. Business has apparently been on the wrong side of the war and fought quite hard to keep his slaves but was also smart enough to sell out other racists when he saw how the tides of the war were rolling, getting by with no losses except his free laborers. This had been the beginning of the end for his once successful plantation farm as all the workers he could find to replace his slaves had wanted things like pay for their services. He'd struggled to find loyal workers that didn't charge more than the absolute minimum and after a series of bad harvests had chosen to pack up, sell his land and head east to find a new source of income. He arrived and began buying up local businesses that seemed profitable and eventually found out about John's successful store. He was more than happy to discuss a fair price for the store until he saw the skin color of the owner that is 10 years not enough time to erase a lifetime of institutionalized racism he began harassing john to sell his rinky dink store and find a farm to work on don't quote me offering way below the actual value and when laughed out of the store began trying to sabotage john's business getting thugs to throw rocks through windows sabotaging deliveries, making a scene in the store. John soldiered on though, having grown tragically used to fighting against racism. He also had a lot of friends in the community who helped keep the store floating. Then it was that John's oldest son who was 13 to 14 at the time found himself getting beaten up, heading home at night from his job. Again, blurry details and wound up with a lot of scars that he'd supposedly been stuck with all his life. John had had enough and as luck would have it, had an out, having been contacted by his old friend Mitch. Mitch was starting up a farm, plantation in the west, south, southwest and needed loyal workers. He'd offered John a foreman position, good pay and a plot of land to live on with his family. This. Dear readers as when the revenge plan begins, John contacted Mr. Business, 
offering to sell at 75% what the shop was actually worth and maybe because his other businesses hadn't worked out. He took it. However, John supplied the contract and proper solicitor to make things legal. The contract basically saying that after midnight of the date of signing, the shop and everything inside would transfer ownership to Mr. Business. Little did he know that that day up until midnight, the shop was having a massive clearance sale, selling everything not nailed down at ridiculous prices to a grateful neighborhood. When they closed up that night and mailed the keys to Mr. Business there was little left to sell. In the store if anything. John never found out what happened next as they left town soon after and never returned but. Personally I'd like to think that Mr. Business arrived with his workers to an empty store with. No deliveries coming. Screaming and crying in the mud as he realized he'd been outsmarted by a lesser species. John and his family moved to work at Mitch's farm for the rest of their lives. John supposedly passing away in his 60s. Thank you for reading. Again. A lot of this is probably embellished if not straight up a fairy tale but my family all treat it as a true story and I felt it was too good of a story to not share here. My guess is that the people in the neighborhood may have avoided the store if an alternative was available if the new owner managed to get it going. This is Boston and back then there weren't any big box stores so you had plenty of small businesses available. The thing is, whether or not this particular story is true, this certainly happened in general and should never have been acceptable. I do believe something like this could happen, you were up front and told it well. I guess Mr. Business win the battle. Because he successfully made John, sell his rinky-dink store and find a farm to work on. Quite literally. But not the way he wanted it. In the end John win the war. Love it when racists get owned by people they think are beneath them. Great story, op. Ooh I love it when racists get some well-deserved payback. The biggest error is in thinking that any plantation owner savvy enough to do that would have hired labor to work the field rather than using sharecroppers. I wonder if you could get the sale record from the local courthouse or an old newspaper announcement given you. Hopefully. Have John's surname? A lot of that kind of old record is online now. Maybe you could find the descendants of Mr. Business and see if they've got a family story. That's if you want to see if you can find proof or some kind of records of what happened. Sometimes a good story is better. Would have been nice if right before midnight he smashed the windows and left a note saying he decorated it just like how he seemed to like the windows. He still owned the store until then so. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Eracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.